Dr. Drew Pinsky is the go. host of the Dr. Drew podcast. Dr. Drew, when you see Kamala Harris and Joe Biden fighting amongst each other, two grown adults in power, what does that tell you? Well, I mean, it tells me the same thing you were saying, which was that there is so much infighting. What I find interesting about this is that in the face of uh, sort of a, it reminds me of uh, sort of a losing battle where when people start to realize things are going poorly, they panic. And in panic, they start to engage in splitting behaviors. They start blaming one another for everything, trying to be the good guy when other people are sort of put, put aside as the bad guy. It's just sort of a classic situation in panic. And this has been the party of panic. Panic never makes things better. I mean, look what they did during COVID. They created panic and panic made everything worse. Tell me about the splitting situation, because we're seeing yeah. Barack Obama scold black men. We're having Harris's people yell at her super PAC that they're not spending the money the right way. What is that signal that they know they're losing and they're trying to come off as yeah. the good guy? No, that's well, for sure, as opposed to the person who caused the loss is the bad guy. But you said something earlier that I thought was very insightful. You said they're out of step with average Americans, independent of identity, that their old strategies are losing strategies. So they're desperately looking for other ways to make things work. They're running around in a panic, grabbing at whatever, and in doing so, showing further how out of step they are. And they're going back when they start to feel, you know, that they, they people are seeing through them, they double down, at least Kamala Harris seems to be doubling down on some of these old strategies. So usually they have a lot of money and they control the media and they have these race cards that they play, they have these little hoaxes yep. that they roll out that usually is effective. And you're saying this campaign, it's not working. And it, it's actually backfiring. But instead of recognizing it, they're just doing the same thing over and over, but stronger. And and splitting. Right. And and sort of trying to say to distance themselves from the losing member of the team. Kamala seems to be losing. I'm not part of her team anymore. It is so interesting, though, as you again, you pointed out in your, in your little uh, premonitory thing about how. President Biden seems to be actively undermining some of what the Harris campaign is attempting to do. And it makes sense. It seems like there's sort of two camps. There's now the what I suspect might be the Pelosi camp, which Harris was anointed by. And then there is the Biden camp who is left angry and embittered. And particularly when a losing team has been anointed of course, they're going to continue to express their bitterness. So if 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 Joe Biden, do you think that he might secretly deep down enjoy the fact that Kamala Harris loses so he could say to Pelosi, see, I told you so, because, you know, at the end of the day, this is all about personalities. You know, these guys have big it, egos, it, you know, those remind you of high school. Yeah, Reminds exactly. School. Exactly. I mean, these are, it it look, does. The, the thing is, pe people expect politicians or celebrities to be different than other people. <laughs> you not. know, as well as I, everybody's just human beings. It's a lot more narcissism in politics at a high level and in certain celebrity uh, circles. And that narcissism creates some of these shortcomings we're seeing and how they behave. But if you're an old man and you're a wise statesman like Joe Biden, we hear is, shouldn't he understand that it's beneficial for Kamala to distance herself from him? Shouldn't he understand politics well enough at his age to know that he has to give her a longer leash to say, you know what, you can bash me here, you can bash me there, do whatever you need to do to win. He seems incapable of doing that. He seems He's very seen immature. Well, <laughs> it's hard to call a man in that age group immature, but <laughs> but what he seems he seems embittered, and he, while he no longer is willing to put his own feelings aside for the party's win, that that's what I find kind of interesting here. Everyone's has always been look. The one thing that you saw from this, you've seen from the the sort of the Democratic Party for a long time, is everybody singing from the same songbook for a long time. People really unlikely partners sort of singing the same tune, and that's what was abnormal. What is a little more normal is the infighting that's going on, and I think people are surprised to see that. But that's actually more normal. The right. problem is 
that even though the the sort of the infighting is more normal, the circumstances are so extraordinary where you have a president who has a chronic neurological condition, you have what is effectively a coup, you have the undermining of the will of the people, you have old tactics, and by old, think about it, they're eight to 10 years old now. The identity politics is nearly a generation behind, and the average American, as you pointed out earlier, is seeing through all this. All right, Dr. Drew Pinsky, we put them on the couch. They owe us money. Thank you so much, Doc. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.